Hello and welcome to Strategic Insights Radio brought to you by Sterling Rose Consulting Corp. If your dream is to start a business or nonprofit or grow your existing enterprise, Sterling Rose Consulting Corp. is ready to help make it happen. Our business, marketing and technology consulting services, get you started with financial projections and business planning, accounting and taxes, develop marketing plans and implementing them, growing your market through branding, website development and social media management, increasing productivity with process improvement and automation, and selecting and using the right technology with our business technology strategy consulting and implementation services. I'm Mike Salmon, alongside the CEO and president and owner of Sterling Rose, Miss Jennifer Roos. And I now know why you have me co-hosting the show every week. <laughs> because you want me to read all that, and I can't read it. You just don't want to have to read it, do you? No, I really don't. <laughs> It's nice to be the boss, isn't it? It is. Delegation is all part of it. <laughs> yeah. I'll do anything for our great hosts here. All right. Every month, you have a wonderful topic that really relates to business and business growth and, and running your business and managing your business. And I know this month, you want to talk about controlling that growth. Yes. So, so to kind of unpack that a little bit, and what exactly are we talking about? Okay. So every company wants to grow. Right. They want to hit those big numbers. They want to to make it big in their first year, first five years of business. But what happens is it's called uncontrollable growth. So when you're trying to grow and you hit your numbers, you need to be able to control that growth because there are different things that are going to happen along the way that are actually going to cause you to go backwards. Otherwise, are you saying there's you could actually grow too quickly? Big time. And that's a bad thing. That's a really bad thing, actually. So a lot of times, growing too quickly can actually end your company as fast as not having enough money or growing too slowly. So there's a happy medium that has to be hit, which is called that controllable growth. So one, a couple of things in the dangers of growing too quickly. It, very simply, you're going to have a major problem with your staff. So you're going to get all these clients come in. You're going to have all these potential orders that come, come in to be serviced. And guess what? You've got nobody to do it. <laughs> how do you know if you're growing too fast or if you're growing too slow? How do you know when you're in that sweet spot? Well, let's start with, are you working seven days a week, 24 hours a day yourself? Are you actually hitting the deadlines that you're supposed to be hitting? Are you actually meeting the processes that need to be met? Are you filling out, doing all the administrative work that you need to and allocating the right amount of time to do that? Are you paying attention to a future pipeline of, of business because you're, work, you're spending all your time working in the business instead of on the business to actually control what you're doing for the future? So you got to ask yourself those questions and say, you know, do I have too much at this point and is it the right time to bring on that other person? And understand when that personnel need occurs, you really do have to delegate. You have to bring in that other person and you have to make sure that you are pricing out your services or your products in, a, in such a way to support having that other person. And also when you bring in that other person, there's going to be a period of time that there's training that happens. So note that be careful how much you bring in before that person starts because they're not going to be able to, day one, do everything you do. It's impossible. You have to train them. One of the first things you said, Jennifer, was, are you working seven days a week, 24 hours a day? Wouldn't most entrepreneurs say, well, that's expected when you're starting a business? Yes, See, most would. I ask you the tough questions. <laughs> most would say yes, except that in a year from now, should you still be doing that? No. If, if within six months to a year, you are still working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and don't get me wrong, there are going to be times that you will have to do that, but I'm talking about every single day. It, number one, you're going to pull your own hair out, but, and your family's going to probably hate you, <laughs> but number two, it's not healthy for your business because you're actually not allocating the time to actually grow the business, and honestly, you're going to start resenting your own business. So you need to start that delegation and you need to start bringing in those people and the right people. And there is always going to be a ramp up period of time to do so. And again, staffing is the hardest thing in the world to do because people look great on paper and sometimes you get them in and they're just, 
not the right fit at all <laughs> or after a period of time it's like a marriage in some cases and it's kind of turns into a nightmare <laughs> with the nasty divorce <laughs> So you have to make sure everything is properly in place with those people and that you're setting the culture and you're not allowing the other person to, to, main, to adjust that culture to a point that it's no longer your business. The uh, divorce example, that's just hypothetical, right? We don't know anybody like that. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. <laughs> but, it, but it's not just investing in people, but investing maybe in equipment. May, you know, do I need you know, to, to be more efficient? Maybe I need to have this better equipment. Correct. And so you gotta, you've got to figure out when to make that decision. Yes. So controlled growth in, is, includes a whole bunch of departments within your own organization. It's not just your staffing and your people. It's also your equipment. It's also your taxes and your accounting and your financial projections too. Because you have, there's a difference between your financial projection and the financial health of your business versus that of what's properly done for taxes. <laughs> Sometimes they don't match. So when you talk to an accountant, understand you also need to talk to someone who has a finance background as well not just a tax specialist. You need both of those to come in and say, okay, I've got, and we're going to use this, ironically, I do have a client who's doing this right now. They're buying a $6 million piece of equipment. Now, the question is, when is it the right time to buy it? And we have to figure out, okay, based on what their current customer needs are, what their customer satisfaction needs are, do they have the staff to actually support it? But then also, from a tax standpoint, is it going to hurt them or help them this year? having it or do we wait another six months and hold off on it can we hold off on it from a business standpoint so that it is helpful for next year's taxes so when you're coming up with a decision like that you really have to look at the whole effect it's going to have not just on right now the second but literally over the next two to three years where you can amortize this product or the service so it's literally looking at the equipment itself and understanding the financial impact on the business and the taxation impact on your business, as well as the one major thing that really gets hurt during the time that you are actually getting going through an uncontrollable growth is the dissatisfaction of your customers. And trust me, it's going to happen. All right. No matter how good you are, no matter how amazing your services are and your products, there's going to hit a point where you are at critical mass. And when you hit that critical mass, things fall through the cracks. And it's not intentional. It is actually a part of growth. You try not to, don't get you wrong, and most of the time you feel horrible about it. <laughs> but you will get overwhelmed. And at that point, you have to either decide what whether to understand how to scale better for your organization, put processes in place to scale better, whether they're CRM solutions, ERP solutions, or there are different forms of accounting that you need to do, or different personnel structures that you have to put into place, or different divisions to host something, or outsourcing. Whatever it is that has to happen based on what's right for your business has to go into effect at that time, because that's when you're going to really start to hurt your business because you will lose your customers. And that's going to turn your business all the way around. Right, of course. Well, we're talking about how to control your business growth, because if you grow too slow, that's not a good thing. You might not be in business long. No. If you grow too fast, as you've already touched upon, that could be detrimental as well. So you want to have be at that right pace. So you don't want to be that guy that's a year or, or lady who's a, a year into their business and they're still working 24-7. How do you know, and, I, and one of the things I like about the show is trying to stump you, so let me see if I can <laughs> stump you here. How do you know if it's time for them to invest more in the, in the business or in more people or equipment, or these are just people that have problems delegating? Because when you have your own business, and you know this because I've seen it with you, <laughs> sometimes you feel like you have to do it all, and sometimes it's not a growth business that you're growing too fast. You're just not delegating properly. Yes, that is true. We all have that. It's, well, I mean, as any of us, right, we started our business. This is our baby. And this is the close to a human baby you can have. <laughs> you literally birth this thing. You watch this thing grow and you don't want to let it go. And you're not sure yet about who can do what. You, you know, but you have to let go. And if it falls, it falls. But you've got to fix the pieces at the end of the day. And you do have to delegate. And, and I'm, just like everybody else, 
I'm, I'm guilty of that. There's no question. Uh, you just have this ego about it's your company. It's your brand, your name behind it. So yeah, the, you want it to always have that quality, but it sometimes doesn't work that way. So the reality is you got to know when to hold back. The best thing is to have people, friends, coworkers, vendors, partners, advisors out there that every once in a while just take you to the side and be like, okay, you need to hold back, you know. <laughs> and, and I want to add, by the way, some people may say, well, I can't afford to have advisors or things like that. There are commi- there are organizations out there that provide oh, yeah. these business services free, whether it's through your local university or other business organizations. Well, it's not just that. I mean, so for instance, in my case, I have a group of other business owners who are just friends. They're just other business owners. We get together on a Wednesday night every week and we just talk. We go out for a drink. And literally what we're able to do is talk to each other about things that are happening within our businesses or in the society, whatever it is, it's just conversation, but it gives you some insight into what we're doing. And just that communication in itself is, is a form of advice. So it's, it's not something you necessarily have to pay for. And trust me, other business owners want to sit down together and talk to each other because they're the only ones that can relate to each other. Because let's face it, when I told my family that I was going to start my own company, (laughs) they thought I was crazy. They didn't understand a thing or a reason why I would leave a six figure job in a corporation where I had all the benefits, I had all the things that would, would come with being a corporate job to give all my money away <laughs> and not make any. But as an entrepreneur, that's what you do. You're the ultimate gambler. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. I mean, even if you don't go to casinos and gamble, I'm telling you as an entrepreneur, you're the ultimate gambler. You're the person who is willing to put 100% of their money, life, family on the line, willing to make a million, but we're willing to lose a million tomorrow too because we know we'll build it right back up. But by doing it correctly, as you're talking about, you can mitigate some of that risk involved where it's medium risk, high reward. Yes. So some of the, the things that we all fall into, right? Some of the, especially in manufacturing or even in service industry, we get our name out there, we get a reputation, we're doing really well, all of a sudden a big company comes to you, that big fish finally lands on your lap and they're offering you the world. They are giving you the biggest project imaginable, they're giving you that million dollar project. You're four people. (laughs) Now the problem with doing that is that you can't service that and on top of it, Like you need all this extra equipment in manufacturing. You don't get paid right away. You've got all these new people you have to hire. You get 90 days before you get that first check. You're a small business. How do you survive that? You're going to have diminished profits. You're going to have total cash flow issues. You're going to basically deplete everything you have and probably take money out to service it. How do you sustain that so the reality is sometimes it's a good idea to turn it down and and that is the worst thing to say and and yet it's the right thing to say because you can't handle it yet there are ways to get around that though I mean one thing is ask to take a portion of the project help them find the right vendors to be the project manager for it do something but very honestly If you're still that small and you're looking at controlled growth, sometimes coming out with that really big project, it's too soon and you may have to turn it down and trust me, you'll walk away and you'll be shaking your head going, how could I possibly say no? You're listening to Jennifer Roos. She's the CEO of Sterling Rose Consulting Corp. And this is her monthly program, Strategic Insights Radio, giving advice to business owners and business leaders and executives here on Business Radio X. We always love to hear success stories, and you work with tons, Mm -hmm. hundreds, maybe even more, okay, of businesses out there, large, small, and everywhere in between. Share a story with us with maybe some company that you were working with where you said, hey, we need to pump the brakes a little bit. We need to slow down. Well, ironically, I'm getting calls right now by lots of businesses 
that are coming, having me come out and do assessments for them. Um, so I'm actually leaving shortly to go deal with one of those companies. They're, they're almost 10 years old and they had a growth from a couple hundred thousand to tens of millions. And they are so lost now. They have personnel issues. They're having, last year they had major reputation management issues. Uh, they're having product issues. They're actually having quality control issues. <laughs> they're, they're having taxation issues. And they, they can't find a space to actually work in anymore. Because <laughs> they, they used to be a home-based business. And now they have three different offices. And they're trying to control that and figure out how to make that something that they could run properly as a multi-million dollar company. And also how to staff it probably do they even have the right staff. And they're even said, you know, coming out there, we're going to assess the staff too and, and say, are these even the right people in the right jobs? Cause they're not even sure about that. It's gotten to a point where they can't remember why they started. So there is great success and they're still doing extraordinarily well. They are, but they're now lost because they're not running a couple hundred thousand dollar company anymore. They're running a couple hundred, you know, tens of millions of dollar company now. And it's a totally different animal. So they've, they've come to us to, to help them with that and understand that. Uh, on the other hand, you've got other people who, if you do controlled growth, you can actually make it a scalable option. So Business Radio X, how about that? Sure, go for it. <laughs> I'm all ears. Well, you have a controlled growth model, right? You have different subsections of of, of shows. You have your monthly, your weekly. Uh, you actually have your biweekly shows. You have sponsorship levels. You have locations. You've now come to a point, and you're even at the point where you're ready to take that next level to control your growth and bring in some sales people. And you're where you were the salesperson for the longest time, just you. And then you had support staff within the radio sh broadcasting side. But now you're actually going out there and you're hiring the right people to come in and you're going through that wonderful hire process <laughs> to come in and actually support you to continue that growth at the right rate. So you're at that point now. Even though it's something I would have loved to have done a year or two <laughs> ago, we weren't ready for that. You weren't ready yet. You, but you've hit, now hit that critical mass where it's time for you to, to let some of that go. You have enough shows in. You have enough, you have enough uh, monetary support in to support having someone come through and do that. So even Business Radio X is a good example of controlled growth in understanding when you hit those, those points. And don't get me wrong. We both know how hard it can get sometimes because you feel like you're already there and you're ready to be there, but the money's not there. <laughs> so, and it's a question of, do you want to bring more debt on your company at that point? Or can I survive on ramen noodles? <laughs> and it's been six years and we're now becoming an overnight success. <laughs> and so that's the thing too. There, there really is no such thing as an overnight success. It is extraordinarily rare. Um, even Facebook wasn't an overnight success. The dot-com era. Yeah. Yes, there were examples, but we saw what happened when that bubble burst. Yeah, well, that was just it. It was a bubble. There were, it wasn't real. People made a lot of money very quickly, and, but then their companies didn't survive for the long haul. The reality is a small business, I mean, even just to get an SBA loan, okay? Take that for instance. SBA loan does not mean because you're a small business you get a loan. SBA means that when you have two years of revenue generation, you can finally get a loan from SBA. <laughs> That's what it means. So it's not for startups or for that, that period of time where you're developing your business. Do you want to develop a business? You better be willing to throw in $50,000 into a fire pit and watch it burn, at least, if not more. <laughs> you know how to build a million dollar business, don't you? I do. Start with $2 million. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> As we wrap things up, Jennifer, and we're talking about how to control your business growth and mm -hmm. have, you know, have everything under control, what are some parting words of wisdom you'd like to leave with your listeners? One big one is remember that as you 
if you do uncontrolled growth and you're growing too rapidly, you're, the other issues you will have is your current staff having staff uh, job dissatisfaction. So be careful with growing too fast and overloading the staff to the point that they're ready to walk. Because at the end of the day, you need them. You need their support. You need their backing. And the better you are to your staff, the better off your company as a whole is going to be because they are your biggest cheerleaders. So make sure you treat the staff well. And remember, even though something sounds really great and the, the big deal comes your way, it's not always the right deal. So be careful. Understand how it will affect your business as a whole. Make sure that not one single deal is more than 30% of your profits because that will hurt your business. Let's uh, put your sales cap on. How can Sterling Rose Consulting Corp. help businesses control their growth? So we can go in and actually assess your entire business operations from a financial standpoint, operational, personnel, technology, and marketing. Um, we'll pr we can provide a full assessment on what, you, what it is that each of those departments are and how they should be run and give you recommendations and even implement those recommendations going forward to make sure that we stay in the controlled growth, providing you insight in who and what clients are the right ones for you to be working with at that time. All right. And for those that would like to follow up, I'll go ahead and give the pertinent information. You can go to the website, go to sterlingroseconsultingcorp.com or give them a call at 470-202-8659. Jennifer, as always, thank you very much. Been a pleasure. Jennifer Roos, CEO of Sterling Rose Consulting Corp. And this has been Strategic Insights Radio on Business Radio X. Music.